beautiful Sunday. Happy Valentine's Day to everyone. Before we start with uh, church, I would like to uh, read a few announcements. We are still doing the Lent in the Box and Free Pancake Mix drive through pickup today from 11 to 12 or 4 to 5 p.m. here in the upper level parking lot. Uh, come on by and get your free pancake mix courtesy of the youth group and a Lent kit, a Lent kit excuse me, from the Children, Youth, and Family Ministry Team. And there's also resource kits available for teens, children, and adults. Bible Explorers is also today uh, at 4 to 5 p.m. downstairs in Fellowship Hall. Uh, 
Wear a mask, bring your Bible, and join your friends, all you upper elementary students, and join your friends for a fun Bible exploration. Also, Wednesday, we're going to have our Ash Wednesday service. I can't believe it's already here. Um, at 6.30 p.m., it's a little different this year, as everything has been the last 11 or 12 months. But come in, please join us in person or online via Facebook Live, like many of you are watching now, uh, this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. With that said, I will now welcome Pastor Jeff. Well, good morning, friends. Grace and peace to you in the name of the risen Christ. I want to make a special welcome to everyone who's joining us online via Facebook Live. Happy Valentine's Day. I think it's a good day to be cuddled up in a blanket. And if you're near someone you love, just give them a nice hug. And, you know, stay warm. Well, friends, uh, grace and peace on this beautiful winter's morning. I think it's a reminder that sometimes we do need to stand back a little bit and just live into the moment and enjoy the presence of God. Take time, be still, and experience the fullness of God's grace. As um, Wes mentioned, we have any number of activities happening at the church in the week and the coming weeks ahead. One of the things that we'll be doing beginning February 24th is a book study on Adam Hamilton's The Walk. That's going to be the theme of our Lenten season this year. And this is an opportunity for all of us as a congregation to enjoy this book. Anyone who wants a copy can receive a copy. We'll be handing out copies today as well for those who um, are able to get out. If you aren't able to come, just contact the church. Uh, leave a comment in the section on Facebook, and we will make sure you get a book prior to February 24th, and that'll be a Zoom study that we will be offering. This is um, the last Sunday before the Lenten season, and it is an opportunity for us to get our hearts refocused on God, to remember the story of Christ, and to live into the movement of the Holy Spirit for our lives and in our hearts. And this morning, um, we are going to go to the beginning of the book of Mark, that just starts in the middle of things by saying this is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And we are grateful to be able to share this message on a day like today. And you are all in your sacred spaces, just as we are experiencing God's sacred space here in the sanctuary this morning. So blessings to all of you. Thank you for all who are gathered. And I'd like to make a special welcome to any visiting guests who are joining us today on Facebook Live or later on YouTube. It is a blessing to be able to share in the life of faith together, even if it's through technology, because I know, though, that there are many of us who are gathered right now, and it is a blessing to be able to do so. Again, I'd like to offer a word of thanks to um, Wes, who braved the cold this morning, coming from Gardner to share in uh, our worship experience, and later we'll hear a special word from our coordinator of children, youth, and family, Sabrina Wellman. And to all those who are gathered in their own sacred spaces, know that you are seen, that you are blessed, and you are loved. And so let us continue this time of worship together with the reading of our call to worship by Wes. The light of God is shining, shining around and within. The voice of God is calling, calling not just from the ancient texts, but from here and now. The love of God is with us, flowing around and within us. Let us worship God together in our sacred spaces, ready to hear the good news about Jesus. Amen. Well, friends, we know that over the past few weeks, we've been celebrating 100 days of prayer, uh, offering a prayer a day as we head to our season of Easter. And it's been a wonderful reminder that we, as a people of faith, are bound together in love. We're bound together by sharing in our joys and concerns. We're bound together knowing that we rely fully on God and God's grace for all that we are. That we remain a tight-knit community ready to serve Christ and serve one another. And one of the things that we do as people of faith is offer our prayers together. So this morning, we do want to be in prayer for one another. I know there are many right now across the community and across the region who um, 
are needing a little extra care as they deal with the cold weather. And we, as a community of faith, um, recognize that sometimes we need to reach out to others to ensure that they get the care that they need. And this morning, in our own community, we want, we want to keep in prayer Sandy and Michael Neiman. Uh, Sandy, again, is recovering from back surgery. And Michael, this past week, while he was rehabbing at Mid-America Rehab Center, uh, had to go to Menorah Hospital um, to take care of the situation. He is now back at rehab at Mid-America, and so we are grateful for his care and for Sandy's continued care as well during this time. And we want to be in prayer for uh, their son and son's family, Matthew. Matthew uh, has been diagnosed with COVID-19, so he is at home quarantining. And wife Jennifer is also quarantining with their children as well. So we just want to be in prayer for them during this time of recovery. And prayers for the family of Doris Mormon. Uh, Doris is a former member of the Soto United Methodist Church. I know that their family are family friends with the Walkers and many of you. And so we just want to be in continued prayers for Doris as uh, they celebrate her life. Again, Doris transitioned from life to life eternal on January 21st. Prayers for the family and friends of Shane Baker and his wife, Abby, and three children on the sudden passing of Shane last week. They are residents of DeSoto. I know many of you uh, know the Baker family. And so we just pray that they experience God's blessing and healing grace during this difficult time. Prayers for the residents of Hillside Village. They were able to um, be moved from quarantine and isolation uh, following a COVID-19 outbreak. And so we are grateful that they are able to do that as well. For continued prayers for all of our healthcare workers and for those who are distributing the vaccinations. If you need to be vaccinated, please don't hesitate to do so. Go to the Johnson County uh, Health website or talk to your doctor and schedule an appointment, particularly those who are 65 or older or who work in the healthcare field. Please uh, take time to do that. Prayers for our teachers and students and um, staff of USD 232 and anyone who works in any school system, recognizing that again, we're in a state of flux, a time of um, you know, the, the midwinter laws that I think a lot of students experience, as well as, hey, we're looking forward to spring, we're ready to get outdoors, and I know that this can be a difficult time for teachers and staff and students as well. And prayers for in the days and weeks ahead that we can have our hearts prepared for the coming Christ in our lives as we begin the season of Lent on Wednesday. I know Tuesday is oftentimes a celebration, Shrove Tuesday or Fat Tuesday, and we're offering pancakes mix to uh, help you celebrate this time as we prepare for the gift of Ash Wednesday. And I just hope that we as a community, as a congregation, that though we are still isolated, we can live into the celebration and prepare our way forward as we begin this Lenten journey together. Well, friends, there is much to pray for. There is much to lift up. There are many joys that we are thankful for, many concerns that weigh heavy on our hearts. Wherever you are in this moment, know that God hears, God sees, God recognizes all that we have to give over to God. And you're invited to be in an attitude of prayer as Wes prays for us the prayer of the people. Holy God, you have come into the world for our sake. You have entered our souls in our sacred spaces when we are open to your grace. You have also come into those spaces in late nights and when our hearts are confused. Come to us again and let us follow your way. Let your name be praised aloud and your grace be in our, in our hearts. We pray that we may prepare the way of the Lord together. Amen. Holy God, this is a time of blessing and grace. 
And in the stillness of this chilly morning, may we be reminded of the steadfastness of your love, a love that continues to be poured out wherever we are gathered. Help us to see clearly the truth and beauty of the gift of your Son, Christ. We know that we're still in a season of waiting, of anticipation, where sometimes our impatience and isolation can become very overwhelming. But help us to see that we are connected together through the power of the Holy Spirit, that we are a community of grace transformed by our faith, a faith taught to us and demonstrated through Christ. That though we are on the cusp of Lent, that we are ready to have the paths cleared for us so that we can move forward on our journey together. We know that many of us perhaps are still feeling isolated and alone, that we yearn to be connected with each other. May we continue to be a congregation that seeks that way to stay connected to showing us how to remain in community despite these obstacles, to help us see that when we can live in and lean into the truth and beauty of your love, that we truly can transform the world, even when the world sometimes just put up so many barriers that continue to seemingly separate us. Help us break through the discord. Help us to see that we are a community that is ready to move forward on this discipleship journey. Help us be ones who truly prepare the way of Christ, a Christ who came to us, taught and loved and healed us all, a Christ who taught us to be in prayer together by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And now I'd like to invite our coordinator of children, youth, and family forward, Sabrina Wellman, as she <laughs> offers this children's moment as we ready ourselves to hearing the scripture. Good morning, friends. It is good to be worshiping with you. I hope that you are safe and warm wherever you are with us today as we worship together. This morning, our Bible scripture comes from the book of Mark, and Mark is one of the four Gospels, and it's the shortest Gospel. It is action-packed. It never stops. Jesus is always moving and going, and so I invite you to read some of it and see just how busy things are in this Gospel. And in Mark's Gospel, unlike Matthew or Luke, he doesn't talk about when Jesus was born. He just gets started about the good news of Jesus Christ. But he does talk about a promised messenger, one that was promised in the Old Testament. And it's someone that we have learned about before. And I wonder if you know who it is. I'm going to give you some clues who this messenger is that we're going to hear about. He is someone who helped people prepare for Jesus coming. He is Jesus' cousin. We talked about that person during Advent. Do you see anybody know who it is? He also wore funny clothes and he ate bugs. So let's listen as Mr. Rains reads our scripture to see if you guess who it is that's talking in part of it, or that we're going to hear about. From Mark's first chapter, verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, God's Son, happened just as it was written about in the prophecy of Isaiah. Look! 
I am sending my messenger before you. He will prepare your way. A voice shouting in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make his paths straight. John the Baptist was in the wilderness calling for people to be baptized to show that they were changing their hearts and lives and wanted God to forgive their sins. Everyone in Judea and all of the people of Jerusalem went out to the Jordan River and they were being baptized by John as they confessed their sins. John wore clothes made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He announced, One stronger than I am is coming after me. I am not even worthy to bend over and loosen the strap of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thanks be to God. So did you guess who it was when I gave you those clues? It's John the Baptist. John the Baptist is Jesus' cousin. He um, was out by the Jordan River, right? And he wore a camel's hair. Did you hear Mr. West read that? And he ate locusts and wild honey. But he had an important job. He baptized Jesus and he baptized people who came and heard his message to change their lives because he wanted them to remember to follow God's law, to love God, to love their neighbors, and prepare themselves for Jesus' coming, Jesus' ministry. Well, here we are. It's almost the very beginning of Lent. What is Lent? It's this 40-day time, this season in our church calendar, where we take time to prepare ourselves as we get closer to celebrating Easter. And during Lent, we prepare ourselves by remembering how God wants us to live and also practicing some of our spiritual practices that help us live the way God would have us live. And so to help all of you do that, we have prepared these kits for you. And so I hope that your family will stop by today after worship or later this afternoon. And we'll be here from 11 to noon and also from 4 to 5 today to give you one of these kits so that you can join with us and with all of your friends that are part of our DeSoto United Methodist Church community of faith. And even though we may not be able to gather together, we'll still be doing the same things together and learning together during this season. Friends, will you pray with me? We will pray an echo prayer. I will say a line, and I invite you to repeat it after me. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, Thank you, Thank you, For showing me, For showing me, How to love and live, How to love and live, Help me, Help me, Love and live, Love and live, like you. Like you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sabrina. Friends, will you pray with me and for me? Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be a faithful response to the Spirit moving among us in this place, in this moment. Amen. Well, down the street from where we live, there were, you know, since we moved in in 2014, there was this big empty lot. You know, there was a house and then a big lot, two lots actually, and another house. And it was green and we would see children playing in it. 
In fact, it had just a little space to where uh, the gentleman would practice his wedge game. You'd see him out hitting golf balls uh, near a little flag on this big uh, field, basically, right next to our house, even though we live you know, pretty much in the center of town. Well, then one morning, you know, uh, a couple of months ago, we were awakened in our house to the sound of the low rumble of heavy equipment moving down the street. We kind of know what that sounds like. It's a and we were wondering, oh my gosh, what is going on? And, you know, that once serene lot was starting to get dug up. In fact, they were clearing out and have, moving some dirt out, and they created these two, you know, pretty large rectangles of dirt that eventually, um, you know, they put gravel and then some concrete. And lo and behold, what was happening was they are now building two houses. And so for the next several weeks, we heard in the mornings the sound of the hammers and construction and saws and things of that nature happening, where what was going on was two new houses were coming up. And so that meant our neighborhood, which once had this kind of big open field, was now about to change. Now, there are those of us who really welcome change, who are ready to see something different happen, something new, who are excited by the prospect of um, what was once old can now be renewed again. But there are also those of us who prefer things to stay the same as much as possible. We want to conserve things. We want the makeup of things to kind of stay static and constant. We're not quite ready to live into something new happening. And we prefer, prefer things to change on our terms. We don't want things to change, you know, because someone else said, hey, th this is what's going to happen now. We like to have input on things, and we want to make sure that whenever a big change happens, it is us who is making the decision. And so I'm sure in my own immediate neighborhood, there are those of us living on the street and in the neighborhoods who are like, hey, we really welcome these new houses. This will be great for the neighborhood. We look forward to seeing who's going to move in, and maybe it'll be some new families and kind of liven up things. And, and for those of us with kids, we're like, hey, maybe there'll be kids who move into the neighborhood and more for people to play with and things like that. Or there are those of us who were like, hey, we liked how it looked. We liked that big green in the middle of the street. We really enjoyed the fact that, you know what, on you know, certain uh, Saturday or Sunday mornings, we'd hear that the rhythms of the lawnmower and those type of noises as a reminder of the kind of serenity of the neighborhood. And so we have to decide whether this new thing is really good news or if it's bad news. If we want to be in a mentality of conservation, of conserving the way things were, versus, oh, this is an opportunity to get to know some new people, to welcome some others into the neighborhood, to perhaps to get to um, experience progress. And so it's a tension that we live in. What are we ready to experience that's new versus, hey, it's okay to live in the way things were. And so the Gospel of Mark, you know, it's interesting here, it begins with a proclamation that change is happening right now. And that change is the new beginning of things, of God breaking in, of the Son of God being with us. Now, to modern ears, these words perhaps have been tempered a bit, we recognize the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as an obvious allusion to something we already know, Jesus as Messiah. And after all, we've been told over and over and over and over again, for most of us who've been in church for a good portion of our lives, who Jesus is. And so this opening doesn't carry the same radical weight it once did. You know, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ Hey, you know what? We know that Jesus is the good news. How is this new for us? Yet when we understand these words as a counter-narrative to the prevailing assumptions of the world, 
words that are cutting through the perceived notions of culture and society, then the good news pronounced becomes much more pertinent. Now, when Rome was at the height of its empire across the Mediterranean world in the first century, after conquering regions, the Romans would have parades. They would have these big parades in which the good news was proclaimed. The victorious emperor was understood to be divine, a son of a god, and the giver of the good news to the world, usually through forceful subjugation in the name of peace. We called it the Pax Romana. Man, you know what? You were forced to endure the peace of Rome. And everybody should be grateful for their station in life. You know, this is the good news of the emperor. So when Mark, writing in the first century somewhere in the Roman Empire, announces the beginning of the good news of Jesus, this emerging Christian community is actually subverting the culture by stating that their good news does not come from an emperor, like society is saying. No, the good news comes from the emperor. No, what they're saying is the true good news comes from the one true God. This new beginning and this belief in proclamation would have been considered treasonous because it's going against the flow of the culture, the understanding of the empire, the movement of society that says, no, the good news comes from the peace of Rome, even though they may be trampling on you, that is where your allegiance should lie. And so it was a subversion of the way things were, creating a tension with how we are called to live in God's love, the true ruler of our lives, versus the cultural assumption that our allegiance was and is to an emperor, to something else, to whatever leader we want to follow. And so it created a healthy, but sometimes dangerous tension. And this would have been a disruption to the status quo. And so immediately following the beginning of the good news, again, like Sabrina mentioned, what just starts right in the action? There's no time for backstory. It's like, hey, this is happening right now. You better find the Lord. And here comes John the Baptist wandering the wilderness. And he comes into the neighborhood announcing that something new and wonderful, whether we are ready for it or not. Now, again, Mark is pretty sly in how this announcement is presented. The words of Isaiah are used. Again, there are echoes of Scripture, of the Old Testament, of what God has been doing and continues to do. And Isaiah, the prophet, announced the universal salvation for all the nations under God. And guess what? This is what's happening under Jesus. This character, John, in inviting others to repent, is asking all of us to clear our hearts and prepare to take this journey with Christ. Are you ready for your neighborhood to be changed? This is what John says, hey, I'm here to change the neighborhood. Because guess what? Jesus is right behind me. And wow, it's going to be a radical change. Are you ready for a new beginning with God that will transform the way things are? That is what's happening. That is what Mark is doing. The beginning of the good news. Prepare the way. The one who is greater than I is coming. And you better be ready. And we are on the cusp of Lent with Ash Wednesday happening this week. It is a time of spiritual renewal where we are invited to think about how we understand the promise of the good news. What is the good news for our lives? And whether the promise of a new beginning is something we are ready to live into. It invites us to think about how we understand the gospel. Where do we look for good news happening? Are we continuing to look to the world, to the culture at large, for the assurance of things? Much like in the ancient world, it was an emperor who was the support, the source of your supposed well-being. And so immediately we're asked, we have to ask the question, in this season now, where are we placing our hopes? 
For us, what does the beginning of the good news look like? What is the gospel truth for our lives? John is telling us to prepare the way by repenting of our sins and returning our hopes, not to what society tells us, but rather to turn toward God again. He's the rumbling equipment that is ready to break new ground in the neighborhood, causing disruption, but a disruption that is challenging and hope-filled at the same time. We are called to welcome the new neighbors in, ready to demonstrate the goodness of God's love and do be prepared to have our hearts and minds transformed. It is not us that we're, you know, we're trying to impose something on the new neighbors, but rather we need to be open to receiving what that new neighbor, Christ, has to give. Now, I think we've learned over the past year that our world is quite fragile. One where the center cannot always hold, where creation can be torn, and humanity pitted against each other. We are finite beings susceptible to the prejudices of culture, of misplacing where we actually want to find good news because we want it so often on our own terms. We've grown used to the discord and to the echo chambers that reinforce our misplaced beliefs. We are hurting as our loved ones are sick, our own economic situations tenuous, and we wonder if we'll ever get to all be together again. But there's a promise that our present discord can be washed away. John came and baptized others, freeing them from the bondage of sin and offering a new way forward in which we are defined by our reliance on God's grace and our love for one another rather than holding on to our own brokenness and living in fear. And Jesus will continue to sustain us through the power of the Holy Spirit to the point of going to the cross to truly free us all and liberate us into a new way of living and being together. But only if we welcome him into our lives so that we can share in that life together. This will mean having our eyes open to the reality of things, of no longer living into the false narrative that it is our culture and ourselves that can provide us all the security we need. But rather, we, it's okay to go back to the beginning and say, no, it is God who provides all. And it is Christ who can cut through all the stuff that has cluttered our lives, that has created this, these mountains of discord, that if we can follow his path, then we'll experience the fullness of the good news. And so when we turn to the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, when we decide to shed the false reality we have created and open our own eyes to the truth of things, a truth that begins with acknowledging both our real fears and faults, but also our hopes and desire to live into God's love, then we are ready to start this journey afresh. We are ready to heed the call and to respond to the beginning of the good news together. We are ready to embrace what John offered by preparing the way and we are ready to take on and move forward with Christ, who truly is the beginning of the good news. And let us take that beginning and move forward together. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, you have blessed us with the good news of Jesus Christ. Help us embrace this message that John offered. Help us embrace the power of the Holy Spirit that Christ has showed us. Help us be ready for this journey of Lent, that despite all that is happening in our world today, at the center of who we are is your sustaining love for all of us. Help us be ready to share in the good news together, to moving forward in our faith. 
and ready to be engaged with Christ and each other. In your son's name, amen. Well, friends, today again has been a blessing, a blessing to be part of this worship with all of you. I hope wherever you are in this moment, you recognize that you help sustain the mission and ministry of this church. Again, it's through your prayers, through your presence, through your gifts, through your service, through your witness that you demonstrate the fullness of God's love to the community around you. For some, that simply means being in prayer. For others, that means being present to others during their time of need. For here at the church, sometimes that means the giving of time and resources. And we are blessed by all that you give, whether it's through a donation, whether it's through um, going to desotoumc.org and offering an offering. But always, at its core, essentially, it's the simple giving of yourself over to God and ready to be empowered by Christ to doing the work of the Holy Spirit in the world. And so however you give, know that it is a blessing. And know that by giving your time today, you are help building a life forward so that all can experience the goodness of God's love. May you go now in peace, refreshed and renewed in the spirit. May you be in spaces that are warm, and may you be sustained by God's warming love. And may this time be a time of grace and peace. Thank you for joining us in worship. Go now in peace. Amen.